Welcome folks. Today I was going to be talking a little bit about antifreeze in your vehicle. Uh, for starters, let's start off with some uh, safety. Uh, first of all, never work on your uh, coolant system, meaning your radiator or anywhere around there when it's hot. If you start uh, loosening your uh, radiator cap and that thing's hot, you're going to get one heck of a burn because that water gets uh, to boiling temperature and then some. Okay, uh, make sure you're safe on this one. Wear eye protection at all times so you get a squirt of this in your eyes. It's not the most pleasant thing. Okay, safety things considered. Uh, what you see before you is an antifreeze tester. And I've had this one for a very long time. As you can see, it's had a repair on the, uh, the bulb that creates the vacuum to uh, draw up the fluid from the radiator. Okay, so now what you have, <clears throat> you have um, radiators cool, of course. Then you can remove the radiator cap. And then you simply just insert this hose down into the, the fluid inside your radiator. And you can also check at the same time the uh, fluid condition inside your reservoir, the part that spills over into the little plastic bottle. Okay, so you draw some of that up there. I'm not really going to show you with the liquid today. Just basically an example of how to do it. And a little uh, the technical stuff, if you will, on uh, mixture and concentration of uh, what you'd have in, in ratio to the water. So like I say, you draw it up there. And I'll, I'll set this down so and get another close-up on it so we can show you what's going on here. Alright, there's a little needle right, right there. What I've done is it's sitting horizontal so it won't won't really indicate properly but when this thing is upright and it's full of fluid you keep drawing fluid up until it's you can no longer see the fluid it starts entering up into here this needle will float and there's a little you can't really see it because I got silicone on it but there's a little circle there with some crosshairs molded into a plastic there and when that needle's pointing up right that means that it's level and it's ready to take a reading okay now down here there's another little, or should I say a bigger arrow, and it will it will rise depending on the concentration of antifreeze. Um, it works on specific gravity, I believe, and you can see there I have a pencil line. And what that tells me is, uh, what I've done is mixed up uh, brand new antifreeze, the orange stuff. Uh, by the way, the orange stuff that you get is, goes under the trade name Dexcool. And, uh, it's uh, supposed to be good for about five years. The old antifreeze that they had uh, before, they still sell it apparently, and it's only good for two years. It's kind of a lime green yellow, if you will. So those are the basic change intervals. But now, getting back to this thing here, uh, when this needle approaches this line here, and I have a 50-50 mix of distilled water, not just regular tap water, especially if you're in the east, it tends to be hard with minerals. Not good for your cooling system. So that's what I used for a base point. And you can go as high as 70% on your antifreeze mixture. That means uh, 7 parts of antifreeze to 10 parts of water. And the reason being that it has a maximum on it is if you go any higher than that, it actually causes your vehicle to overheat as well as it will cause corrosion. It needs the water percentage in there to, to have its uh, oh, chemical way, if you will, in order for it to work properly. Now on this side here, it's a freeze point, and that's marking the 50-50. That's what most uh, places, if you go get your antifreeze, if you get your cooling system flushed, and then if you have it, uh, the antifreeze mixture renewed, they will, will give you probably a 50-50 concentration of distilled water, hopefully, and 50% antifreeze. And that's, to me, is the lowest concentration you should have year-round in your vehicle, as well as uh, no more than 70% antifreeze to water. Otherwise, then you'll have overheating and uh, uh, corrosion problems. On the flip side of this thing, there's actually a, a boiling point. And when this, this arrow is pointing, it'll point the same on both sides when this needle is vertical. I've got this thing sideways now. Um, you can actually find the boiling point of your coolant. Mind you, that's with a, a radiator cap in about the 15 uh, pounds per square inch rating. Now, if you were to run, say, just a cap with a hole in it and just had it, the excess fluid go into the um, reservoir, uh, the boiling point would be much lower. Now, with the, adding the pressure to the system, it increases the boiling point. But as for the freeze point, um, it will take you, uh, if you look at the numbers here, 
It's supposed to be minus 34 and a 50-50 concentration of antifreeze. As you can see here, it's not that accurate. It might depend on temperature and maybe the condition of the antifreeze. So that's that part of it, how to, how to measure what you've got in there. I'm going to put that aside. You just use a measuring cup. I'll zoom out a little bit for you. You can use a measuring cup or head for the dollar store, see what they have if it's a bit bigger. Um, the thing you got to watch too is you say you flush your uh, cooling system with fresh water. Some of that tends to get left behind even if you take the brain, uh, the drain, the brain, excuse me, the drain plugs out of the engine block. It always seems to be a bit water so left behind. So always check your concentration after you've added. Make sure you do it when it's cold. So you can get a bigger one. This one's good for a liter up here in Canada. And if you're in, in the US of A, then you've got your quart. And it's all just a ratio mix. It doesn't matter what system you're using. Just remember, somewhere between 50% and 70% antifreeze. Keep it within those parameters there and uh, you'll be good to go, no problems. Okay, what I use for distilled water is I save up these old milk jugs here. You can buy distilled water probably at some automotive stores as well as even some pharmacies, but why pay for it when you can have it for free? All this is is an old milk jug. Rinsed it out really well. And then I just uh, put tap water and let it sit. And as you can see by the date there, it's 2012 now. That's been That water's been sitting since 2010, so I'm, I'm assuming that most of the stuff is uh, all depleted, and I've never had a problem doing this method here. And when it comes to... Uh, When it comes to leaks in your uh, system, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of commercially made chemicals and things out there. I've tried a lot of them, and uh, never had a whole lot of luck with them. This is my secret here. Um, you say you spring a little tiny leak, and uh, even most uh, radiator, um, well, plug it chemicals, what have you, won't do much of a a plug job on a big leak there you've really got to do a mechanical repair but for small little tiny pinhole leaks I find that just the, the coarse uh, ground pepper works you just head for the dollar store you get yourself for that a can for a buck and well, unless you're using lots of it uh, it'll last you a long time one word of caution uh, don't use the surrounding kitchen table after you've got anywhere near antifreeze with it antifreeze is a poison um, a little kitty cat gets some of that on his paws, even if it's diluted. Well, it uh, it kind of kills them. It's it's not very good for for any living thing. So make sure anything you use around uh, antifreeze don't don't leave any antifreeze puddles, drops, or anything after you've done your jobs uh, in your driveway or what have you. Always rinse it, wipe up what you can, then rinse everything you can away with the hose and dilute it as much as you can because a dog or a cat gets that on its paw. They lick their paw, and then uh, you got antifreeze poisoning. Same thing with yourself. Uh, wear eye protection. Don't splash it in your eyes. Um, you can't say enough about this stuff. It it smells sweet. If you smell it, it smells uh, like uh, a sweet syrup. And that's probably why the animals tend to uh, to want to try the stuff out and see how good it tastes. Well, it's it's a poison to them, so don't let them do it. Keep your your work area clean around antifreeze. Make sure everything's sealed up when you're done. Don't leave anything, no residue whatsoever anywhere. Okay, then uh, basically that's that's what I do for uh, for antifreeze. Uh, just keep those points in mind. Uh, like I say, the the lime green stuff, uh, yellow if you will, it's good for two years they claim. And if you get the orange colored stuff under the trade name Deck School, it's supposed to be good for about five years before you change it. Um, when I flush uh, my radiator system, I just use uh, hose water. I just hook up a hose to it and flush it through, and and that's that. Uh, you put some of these uh, flushing chemicals from different companies in there, and, and what I found with the older cars especially is you just create a bigger leak. So unless you're ready to do uh, some repairs or spend some money on the leak that uh, was small, is now big, and you can't, can't put some pepper in to stop it, just use plain water. Make sure everything comes out of there all the rust scale and everything, but it's your choice, it's your money, you can do what you like. Uh, myself, just use plain water, and then drain it all out, and then just add my mixture of distilled water, 
and uh, antifreeze mixture between the 50 and 70 percent. So I hope that helps you in some way, probably save you a few dollars in uh, maintaining your vehicle. So have yourself a nice day and bye for now.